In this tutorial we'll look at creating different surface types within Grasshopper. So if you go to the surface freeform uh, group here there's a lot of different surfaces you can create. I'll show you just a few. The first one is the four point surface. And so the four point surface needs four points. I've already um, created these in Rhino and I've brought them into these container objects or components within Grasshopper. And so then all you have to do is plug these uh, points in and it'll create a surface out of those four points. The one thing to keep in mind here is order does matter. So if I have that point going into D and this one into C, it's going to create a, a kind of odd surface. So just make sure that you um, create these and put these in the right order when you plug them into surface four point. And the next one is the boundary surface. So I'll just go ahead and actually delete this one and delete these points and just create a curve. I'll just create a curve in, um, and actually I'll do a polyline in Rhino. And then we'll bring that curve into Grasshopper. Set one curve. And then we can use the boundary surface which is located again under surface freeform boundary surface and then you just plug the curve into the boundary surface component and it'll create a surface using that curve as the boundary for that surface. You can also create a fragment patch which is also located under surface freeform and I'll use the same curve here and I'll just go ahead and preview that one off. So you can see that does the exact same thing um, and then there's also a just a patch component. And so if I preview both of those off, plug in my curve into here, whoopsies, into the C. Um, the P stands for points, so I can just uh, I can disconnect that. Again, you can um, hold down control to disconnect a, um, uh, a wire, or you can actually just right click and say disconnect. So the patch does the same thing. There are a few additional settings here. So you have the flexibility of the patch, so how close it actually matches the boundary, and the number of spans, which are basically the, the C and V. So the greater the number, the more accurate it will be, but also the more computation it will take. And then trim is it actually creates a patch and then uses the line to trim that patch. So one thing that's important to note here is even though all three of these components produce the exact same result, that's not always true. So depending on the curve type you have, if I draw another curve over here, um, that's a uh, curved curve, so uh, one that has curve to it, not a polyline with straight line segments, and I bring that into here and set that curve. If I, um, I move these over and then copy them over here, if I preview on this boundary surface and use that curve, it'll work for that one. But you'll see that it won't work for the patch. So not all curve types will work with all of these surface types. So you have to be aware that if it doesn't work for fragment patch, then maybe you should try boundary or the regular patch. Um, another really important thing to note is um, the amount of time it takes for Grasshopper to compute these different components. Some of them take longer than, than others and with these short definitions it doesn't really matter but as soon as the definition gets really long even a small increase in time for one component will add the amount of time it takes to compute the entire definition. So it can actually take minutes sometimes to compute a definition. For example if you change the number of um, pattern uh, pattern to a surface or the number of U's or V's in a surface, that might have a rippling effect throughout the definition that takes a really long time to compute. So one really useful thing to understand that is to go to display canvas widgets and you can turn on your profiler and the profiler tells you how long it takes for each component to compute. So in this case you can see if all you need is the um, outline or the, the surface for this particular component then I would use the fragment patch in this case because it only takes 14 milliseconds versus the boundary and patch which takes significantly longer. Again, it doesn't matter for this small definition, but if this definition increases in, in length, which they will, um, it could take quite a bit longer. Um, the next one I want to show is the loft. So if I just, uh, let me just delete this one and then copy this one up vertically. Um, so a loft, if you have a few different shapes, let's say I have another curve here with a different form, and we'll just move this and kind of put it in between these two. Um, if I bring these three curves, let me just delete these into 
grasshopper. Let's set the first curve, set the second curve, and set the third curve, and then run the loft component. You can plug these three in by holding down shift and you can see plugging in order does matter so if you plug this in the opposite order it'll have a different effect um, this is another case where I would use merge just so that you can keep things in order very easily um, the other thing that, that uh, the loft has if you right click on the O here you can actually change the loft option so you could make it a closed loft you could align sections so if they're not quite working correctly you can change that you can also change the type of loft here so all the settings you would normally have in Rhino you can use here as well um, and then also you can always cap a loft so if you don't want if you don't choose close there you can always cap it here and that'll turn it into a solid object the final one is the ruled surface so I'll just go ahead and delete this middle curve here um, and a ruled surface requires you to have two curves, you can't have more than two, and it basically creates a straight line segment between those two curves. So a ruled surface, um, let's actually just use, I'm going to create two new curves for this. Just move this one up, plug this one into here, plug this one into here. I have my two curves in here. Um, if I plug curve 1 into A and curve 2 into B, it creates a straight line ruled surface between those two curves. So basically if you imagine a straight line connecting one curve to the other and being swept along that, the length of that, um, both those curves, that's a ruled surface.